Hey Gemini, I'm Empress Rose and welcome to your reading. I am having the most Mercury retrogradius Mercury retrograde I have ever had. I have lost three videos and one of them was yours. So all through different means, some technological, some um, just brain farts. Anyway, so we're redoing it. Uh, so you're welcome to watch your other major placements if you want. And over here on YouTube, we're going to do uh, Oracle deck readings, Oracle card readings. And then if that resonates, you can join me over on Vimeo for a more traditional tarot spread. So uh, yeah, let's get started here. I do remember a little bit of what your reading was last time. I think the gist of it was that... Um, that there had been some sort of emotional outburst and you needed to uh, strategize how to deal with that. That was the, just a bit. So, but new reading, apparently uh, the universe decided that we were gonna, gonna talk about something else. Uh, direction and isolation. Oh, I haven't seen this card ever. No, I have Direction, so, um, uh, this is lovely having a clear direction we don't who doesn't love that uh, it may be it looks like it's very different than um yeah so in both of these cards there's um there's a group and your direction is very different from the group you're operating solo you're operating alone right in both of these, we have this group over here, isolation and direction. I don't see this isolation as being like super bad. I just see this as like going solo. Uh, there's a where there's a, a point at which you separate from the group. You separate from this can be any kind of group, family group, work group, um, a social group, something like that. You your direction leads you someplace else, uh, and it looks like it might be solo. Um, and I, I see that there are, you know, there's, there's just some highs and lows with that. There's some good parts of that and some not so great parts of that. You might feel a little discouraged, especially if you're going solo. You know, we all need that encouragement, that community that's supporting us. Um, and, uh, and you may be without that for a minute. Um, it's really interesting because in this isolation card, you're solo as you are with the direction. You're getting your own unique, individual, clear direction here. But there's this sense of, uh, there's fog in both of these. These, these cards are surprisingly similar. Um, and there's sort of this fog, right? There's this fog in this. There's this lack of clarity here. But direction, you personally have clarity. The situation may lack clarity, but you personally have clarity on where you're going, which who doesn't love that? Everybody loves some clarity. This could also be, yeah, the way they're sitting now, there's a sense of having been isolated and now receiving some sort of clear, like this isolation, like a, a time of meditation, a time of um, possibly quarantine, a time of isolation. And from that, turning that around into a clear direction where something is much more positive feeling. But both of them have you kind of working solo and the whole group or the whole situation doesn't have to be getting the same message that you're getting, the same direction you're getting. I almost feel like um, there's a sense in which you're singled out of a group um, and given, and you may be given your own direction to go in. I don't see this as like um, being shunned or anything. That's what isolation feels like but with you know it feels like individually but these two cards together i see that you may be coming from a period of isolation into very clear direction there's almost like a hermit card vibe here as far as like the hermit following his own steps his own intuition his own um next steps and and they're very highly individual um very unique to that individual um so there's a sense of yeah there could be some Hermit, uh, when we're talking about the more traditional tarot, um, the Hermit card here is what I'm seeing, is that you have your own direction and you're going into it um, by yourself. And other people may be very unclear about the lay of the land, about the situation. 
Um, and it, it, you may not be able to see anything either, but you're getting a very clear message on where you're going. Um, and it's not the same place everybody else is going. So you're doing something very unique here and very different. You're separating from the group. And this can come as this isolation at one point may not have been a choice, but at this point, it's sort of like, it is a choice now. It's a decision now to just embrace your own unique vision, which you may have found and discovered in a period of isolation and separation from a group. I see it as being uh, really healthy and like what you're meant to do right now. Like there's a sense of purpose to it and um, I, and I almost feel like there's a there's a selection or something here where you're chosen to, to go off in your own direction. Like, okay, the group's going to go here, but we need you to go do that. Wow, we got like a story here <laughs> we got the same you got this card last time i remember very clearly this card coming in and again here you are gemini with this night ride i love this because we have the night ride um we have this foggy landscape here but you know where you're going um, you know, you have a lot of clarity here on where you're going. You may not have in the past, but you do. But we have Night Ride again, um, showing up here for like the third reading in a row. Uh, so we have the foggy dark ride here. We have, um, you may be this owl here, the one with the direction, the one with the clear vision and the direction. This uh, elephant has no night vision whatsoever. Um, so, but they do have strength and they can keep plodding forward. This one has vision. Um, and so this might be you. And again, we're getting this sort of group community thing. Um, but I feel like th this is, this is a journey that you're on with others. This one you are on with others, but you're the one with the vision right now. You're the one with that clear vision. You maybe can't go very far or very fast. You can't just, um, zip through this because uh there's you're you're having to caretake here here's your caretaker thing but there is like sort of a group almost a family dynamic here where everyone's kind of going through this uncertainty together uh but you are the one with the clear vision and the clear understanding of where you're going i mean but the owl can see in the dark but not in the fog right so but there is a sense of vision here um And this fog may cr be creating an illusion of isolation, an illusion of separateness. You may not be able to see the support around you. These, these lights represent the spiritual support and the support around you. You may not be able to see it because of the fog, um, but it is still there. This isolation may, if you're feeling isolated, it's an illusion, but, um, but there, there's a thing, you're, you're out here you're way out on a limb by yourself a little bit here. But you you do know where you're going, so you do need to keep that in mind. Like, don't doubt yourself here. Um, we have to the moon and back. So we do have, um, again, this is having that vision. She's looking into the future. She's having a lot of forward vision, um, but she's holding back for now. She's restraining and restrained for now from heading into that direction. So there is, there, you do have a sense of direction and a sense of purpose here um, and the vision, but this is you um, holding your back. There's something about your intuition that's telling you to hold back a little bit here. Um, we have, we have something in the heart that is being held way back. Um, and then we have something in the heart that's just about ready to go, but you're not, you haven't felt that impulse to move forward yet. But there is, the, again, this is about a vision for the future, which we're also getting with direction here. Um, we have, hmm, I don't know what to do with that queen bee half the time. Um, we have the gardener here. So this is taking care of yourself primarily. Again, we've got this sort of isolation or working solo vibe. You're not actually working solo. It just might feel like you're working solo with this card. This card is um, about the interconnectedness of all of us um, and how we're each responsible for our own space, for our own heart, our own health, our own well-being, our own um, spiritual well-being. 
So, you know, in the desire for world peace, we have to first prioritize our own inner peace because we, that's where we start, right? And so this, this card is always about like your connection to the community, which we're getting over here too, connection to the community and having to take care of your own health and wellness. Um, and because as you come out, as you come into the community, you're bringing what you have, yourself, your attitude, your vision, what you have. Um, so you're contributing that to the community, whether you're intending to or not, you will be. So to making sure that that's as healthy as it can be for the good and health of whatever communities you're part of. And we're all part of multiple communities, although, you know, with, um, with different things going on, we may not feel that way. Uh, but this is saying that the work you do on yourself will have a profound effect on the people around you. And it's very important to prioritize that. Um, this could be why you're still holding back here and not moving forward because you're sensing that there is some inner work to be done here. Um, then we have Miss Sunshine here. Uh, we have uh, staying focused on positive, um, on, on your own health and well-being, on, your, on the health and well-being of your own mind. As we do that, as we grow in self-love and self-understanding, some of our more uh, darker areas that we may feel shame about or we may feel frustrated with, those come into, into view as we're dealing with that. Um, so it's really important to have a foundation of unconditional self-love because as this stuff comes into view more, you're gonna have to deal with what's down here. This can also talk about structures um, in our life and in our past that will always have a profound effect on us and will always be pulling us down a little bit. Um, so it's really important to be focusing our um, staying keeping our minds focused not just I don't want to talk about like false positivity where uh, people are always like high vibes only and you know uh, you can never have a bad day around them you can never admit to struggling around them because it's just like you have to stay positive all the time or else everything's going to fall apart it's just another form of anxiety basically in my opinion the um, false positivity where we cling to positivity rather than letting some sort of flow here so I'm not talking about clinging to positivity um, in a high anxiety way where if we have a moment of not positivity our whole lives are going to crumble into some sort of weird like you know self-predictive uh, reality that we create I mean there is a sense of creating reality but we also have to realistically work with our thoughts and work with who we actually are um, as we as we uh, move um, into um, better, better mind spaces. So this is all about like keeping your minds, we're really working on your mind space um, and not in a clinging way, not in a rigid way, but, uh, you know, allowing the emotions to flow, flow through, looking at them. What is down here? You know, we can't, we can't really look down here. We need to look down here. We need to look at these um, darker parts of ourselves or things that we're ashamed of and things we don't want others to see. We need to look, be looking at that stuff and, and understanding it, understanding ourselves. And this is all in the purpose of self-love and the purpose of sort of releasing any sort of clinging to um, any kind of state. And sometimes people cling to negative states because that's where they're comfortable. That's what they know. It feels real. Um, and sometimes people cling to positive states. So this is just about mental health. Taking both of these cards are about taking great care, good care of your mental hygiene, your health and well-being, um, and, and uh, noticing pattern, thought patterns and uh, working with them to understand. Um, you don't have to go back into them all. Some people benefit from that, other people don't. So you don't have to go back, but you do need to understand the structure so that you can start modifying it, right? We don't go um, do rehabbing a house without understanding, you know, what's load bearing, what's not load bearing. You have to like understand the structure you're working with, and then you can start making some modifications safely. Um, and then we have mermaid's love. This is about either the relationship between the heart and the, um, the mind. This would be the mind. This would be a heart or a relationship between, um, two people. This is sort of, in this deck, in, a, in ways, this is the ideal relationship. Both of these people are very secure. They've both done a lot of this work. They feel good about who they are. They like who they are. Um, and they, but they come from different worlds and different places and different perspectives. They have very different um, 
personalities, but they enjoy their own personality and this allows them to come into relationship in a sense of security. So this one, this one doesn't need this one to be different and this one doesn't need this one to be different. They're both happy with who they are and this allows them to appreciate the aspects of the other person. This is sort of like water and air. Someone's very intellectual, someone's more emotional, someone might be a little messier, someone might be a little neater. This can also relate to work because there's kind of a work vibe here and this, uh, this would be like bringing the creative vibe, um, doing the marketing for an accounting firm or doing the accounting for um, uh, and an artist um, or a theater company or something where we're the you're entering some other world it's not your it's not where you're comfortable um, but you are bringing your gifts and you need to know that if you are not like everyone else in this situation so this could be where this 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 could really be where this is coming in where you're different than other people in this situation, but what you're bringing is unique. You do have a very clear direction. So this could be being hired for something um, or, or having to do a job that you're uniquely suited to, but it is out of your comfort zone and you're not necessarily like everybody else at that company or everybody else at that business. You're bringing something very unique, but you're meant to bring that unique thing and be different from the people, the other people there. So this can also be relationships. It's also reminding me of, um, I think it's Tevye from um, Fiddler on the Roof. He says, a bird may love a fish, but where will they live? So that's a little bit of what this is too. These two can't necessarily, um, it's a relationship that doesn't have like a, a I want to say a native land or a home for both of them. It's like they can visit each other's worlds, but they can't, um, they can't create a reality together because they both need very different things. Like the fish can fly into the sky. We've got flying fish. We've got leaping whales. We can, or breaching whales. We can, we can, the fish can visit the sky and the sky, the kingfisher can dive into the water, but they can't, um, they can't, uh, live in the other person's world. So there may be practical dynamics to an otherwise ideal relationship. Um, and then we have queen bee. So Queen B, uh, it, it reminds me of the song by, um, oh man, it's like a blues guy. Ah, Queen B, Taj Mahal. Um, yes, so Taj Mahal. So there is like a strong, this is very feminine energy. It's very female. This can be a mother figure. This can be a strong matriarchal figure. The Queen Bee protects her honey. So you mess with her bees, you mess with her. Some people might call her a bitch, but you know what? She like uh, is just protecting what's hers, what she's worked hard for. So someone here may be being very, very protective of something uh, that they've worked hard for. Um, this is also just like a very, you know, reproductive vibe, a very, right, we've got like the, um, the fallopian tubes here and the um, eggs and, and all of the female reproductive um, gear is right here as well. So, and these bees, these honeybees. Uh, so there's some, there's a lot of sweetness, but there might be risk in accessing the sweetness. I also see risk here, not risk, but just like practical issues. And this might be practical issues as far as accessing someone's, um, someone accessing, wanting access to something, but needing to pay a price or, or understand what the um, understanding what the dynamic is here. So it's just a very strong female figure is here. This this showed up in your last one too. All right, um, from the Wild Whiskers deck, which I just got and I think is absolutely adorable, the Benevolent Bowl. Uh, generosity, prosperity, kindness. I don't know about this card. This has got to be my most problematic card in this deck. I don't know if you've ever met a bull, but I'm from farming people, dairy farmers, and those bulls, I mean, we were all just warned that you'll die, basically. If you even look at the bull, it doesn't matter if you're in the same. I mean, we weren't even allowed to go in the barn that the bull was kept in. So, um, I'm not sure about this benevolent bowl because it seems a little weird, but it could, it's actually got this queen bee vibe too, as far as like, 
and he's covered in flowers. So maybe this is a like a Brahma bowl from like um, India, where they um, their bowls are are a little less like difficult. And uh, where I was at in India, they actually had a um, I forget what the the party was called, but it was for the cows, and they would decorate them in flowers and chalk paint and all sorts of cool stuff, and just celebrate them for the day and all the goodness that they bring. So the prayer here is crescent horns reflecting the moon. Okay, you're kind in giving nature, I would know. Right, that bull really has a giving nature. Anyway, both of these, um, actually bull coming in very reproductively as well. Um, generosity, yeah, prosperity and kindness. I don't know, the uh, bulls are just too feisty for me to be able to see this one. But anyway, it comes in a bit like this, of this like very masculine energy, very female and feminine energy, and both of them are very protective of, um, of very, very protective and maybe a little bit un, uh, like just seems volatile from the outside perspective. But if you knew, it wouldn't be that that weird of a response. So, all right. Well, I hope that was helpful for you. If you want to join me on Vimeo, please do. If not, see you later.